Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. This is my client Casey. You might remember him from a previous video I did about two and a half, three months ago where I cut his hair like Leonardo DiCaprio. It's grown out a little bit since then. It doesn't look horrible yet, but he's ready for a trim and he's ready for a change. See, as his hair grew out, he decided that he kind of wanted it to flow more. He wanted it to move more. And so he's coming in for a little bit of a shape up. He likes the length, but he doesn't like that it just sits down and heavy. The heavy is not bad. I mean, that's what Leonardo DiCaprio's hair looks like. But, you know, if you want Leonardo DiCaprio hair, it's a different thing from having that sort of layery flow haircut. You see, the way that Leo's hair is cut is very heavy. It's got a long top. It's cut to a 45 degree angle. And so when you pull the hair down like this and cut it, it leaves the top considerably longer, which makes it heavier. It makes the hair sit heavy. Now, this is not a bad thing. It's not like, oh, heavy equals bad. Because what this weight actually does is it creates that strong corner that makes the hair cut shapely. It's the difference between a long blob of hair and long shapely hair. But what we're going to do here is layer his hair a little bit more. We're going to take that hair on top and cut it considerably shorter so that it's not heavy. And then it will be free to move more freely. To begin with, I'm going to work with a panel of hair around the right temple. And I want to start at the bottom here to, I, I really don't need to cut anything off of here, but I want to just in case it's not even because it is grown out and hair doesn't tend to grow back perfectly evenly. So I'm taking off as little as I can here, just a tiny little bit to get a clean straight line for that perimeter. Once I have that perimeter established, I'm going to use that as a guide to take subsequent horizontal sections working up the head. And with each new section that I pull out, I'm using the last section, not the first section, but always the last section, and pulling the hair straight out parallel to the floor to use as a guide to see where to cut the next section. And what you'll see as I work up the head here, because it was considerably longer on top, is the higher on the head that I'm cutting, the more hair I'm cutting off. But the end result is gonna be basically a vertical straight line right here. But because we're cutting it with horizontal sections, that's gonna help encourage movement from front to back in the hair, to where if we cut it in vertical sections, then the hair tends to wanna to kind of sit downward a little bit more. I'm gonna continue taking these sections all the way up and through to the middle of the head. And now with a little test brush here, a little test comb, we can see that it layers very nicely, very naturally. Once I know that I've done the first side good enough, I'll go and try to do the same thing on the opposite side. And if I do it correctly, it'll be the same as the other side. As soon as I get both sides cut, I'm gonna comb the rest of the hair, at least on the right side here, into the direction that I want the hair to flow. Similar to what I was doing in the front, I don't want to really remove much, if any, length from the bottom. But as I work upward, I'm going to do the exact same thing I was doing on the front panel, which is pulling the hair parallel to the floor and using the previous section as a guide. And again, just like while I was working in the front, you're going to see that the higher up the head that I move, the more hair I'll be removing because, again, the previous haircut was very heavy on top. So I'm going to continue taking these diagonal sections until I reach the left side of the head. And once I'm taking hair from the left to the right to cut it, I'm going to actually stop and change directions and pretty much do a 180 and do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, combing the hair into the direction I want it to flow and then taking subsequent sections from the bottom to the top of the head using the previous section as a guide to create a square vertical shape here. Once I'm done with that, I want to comb the hair around while it's wet and just make sure it's moving nicely. And you can see right here with water alone and no real effort, it very easily wants to do what we want it to do. And now that I see that it's doing that, I can blow dry it. Mind you, while I'm blow drying this, I'm not touching the hair. I'm just going to let the air move the hair around. For a lot of years now, I've been saying, oh, good hair doesn't come from a jar. And what I mean is if you take wet hair, you put product in it, you're not going to get the same result that you would get from a blow dry. But that's not to say that it's 100% about the blow dry. It's actually like 10% product, 30% blow dry and 60% haircut. If the hair is cut right, if it's cut too flow and too layer, then you don't have to do much, if anything, to it. You just point the hair dryer at it and it styles itself. And if the hair doesn't style itself, it probably wasn't cut right. I, part of the reason I do this, you know, without touching the hair is a little bit to show off like, oh, the haircut worked, but also to show myself that it worked. I'm looking for things that are inconsistent here that are not laying the way that I want them to. And you can see around the edges, it's a little bit sloppy. This is because the haircut is not finished. I do like to detail and refine the haircut after the blow dry, but I want to continue blow drying the hair just to make sure that everything's going to move the way that I like it. And once I'm sure that it's doing that and everything looks a little bit polished, I can go in and start detailing. So the last time I cut his hair, I deliberately tried to leave the nape area a little bit kind of jagged. And after I went and styled it and started doing uh, pictures of his haircut, I realized that because of his texture and the way his hair grows, if I leave it a little bit messy, it looks like really messy. And so today I went for a tidier neckline. What I'm gonna do in the front here for the sideburns is anything that's willing to flow back, I'm gonna let it flow back. And anything that's not willing to flow back is going to become a sideburn. What I wanna do with his sideburns is just basically cut them right to where his cheekbone is. So I'm feeling with my finger to find his cheekbone and cutting it right about to there. 
So here I'm going through with a little bit of cold air just to kind of get rid of any loose clippings that might be stuck in his hair so he's not itchy. And here you can see that his hair is basically styled. All you have to do is blow dry it back a little bit. But I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of product here because he does have very fine hair. And I don't want the wind to blow and can completely destroy his hair. So I'm not putting in enough to really hold his hair. It's just going to make his hair a little bit sticky, which is going to prevent some flyaways and still allow the hair to move a little bit freely. Now, before we look at the finished result here, before let's do a little bit of a photo shoot. I like to do these in these videos because a lot of barbers and hairstylists think that the photography portion of, of what it, or what has become a very important part of our career now because of social media, a lot of them are intimidated by it. And so I like to just show the process to be like, look, it's not that hard. Typically, I kind of hate ring lights, but I used one here because the salon lights are yellow and this particular ring light can put out yellow light. In fact, those light bars, the Young New Hawaiian 360s that you see around my model here, those are also putting out yellow light. And so because my salon lights are yellow, I want to light him with yellow light. And then in camera, like in the shot you're seeing here and in all the shots that I'm posting on the screen, I'm correcting for the yellow. If I used white lights to do this, I can't correct for that because the room is flooded with yellow light from the house lights. I'm using a Canon 6D Classic, uh, the 6D Original 6D Mark I. This is like a $300 camera on eBay. And I believe that for the salon and barbershop, this is just the best bang for your buck if you wanna get great portraits for very cheap. The lens I'm using on here is a Sam Yang 85 millimeter f1.2 and to be completely honest this lens is overkill any 85 f1.2 is overkill for haircuts because what tends to happen is by the time you get the eyes in focus at f1.2 the whole haircut is out of focus but it's still fun sometimes to you know just have too much lens anyways thanks for watching if you're into this sort of thing please like and subscribe